Hello and welcome to week five, round 10 of the EU Open Division. Uh, I'm Spaceman and I'm joined by the wonderful Nari Mizuki and Lafon. And guys, we're almost there. We're almost to playoffs. It's, uh, I mean, this is one of the more interesting times because now we're getting the matches that mean that matter, right? So we're going to see, I think, a lot of high tier gameplay coming in for the last couple of weeks, which is, or last couple of games, actually, which is uh, always very exciting because it makes for a more enjoyable match to spectate. I think one of the cool things here is we're seeing two teams that are, you know, uh, somewhat new-ish to this uh to this particular open division looking at initially at team cat uh nari this team hasn't been together a whole lot you're not, not wrong they've only been together for about and supposedly a little bit of info inside information here the captain of team cat used to be the captain of team clash the very team that they're <laughs> playing up against so this is going to be a little bit of a grudge match and i'm pretty excited to see how it goes because both of these teams are seven and two supposedly team cat dropped the first two games because they registered late for open division which if that is as accurate as they make it out to be then yeah this could be a pretty strong team uh, for contention if they win this they still have a slight opportunity for possibly getting to playoffs um what do you think i don't know what 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 can clash do what is their um response to this I mean, this team has a couple of names that have been around for a while, right? We have uh, Bacon Thief, who played on Elotic, some high-tier teams, uh, you know, a player from Dopamine, actually, a team that is very familiar to broadcast GG watchers as they, uh, you know, ran up through contenders last season, uh, or sorry, through uh, Open Division last season, only to fall slightly short at the very end in playoffs. Uh, so there, there's players here that have experience, you know, it, so it's not like this team is completely without it. They know how to play the game at a competitive level in this later stages of the tournament. And so I think here we're going to see a team can cl can clash continue their record of uh, these players that have done well uh, in in history. They have open division playoff experience. Um, can they continue to do that, bring their new players in line to their to their uh, gameplay, or, or will Team Cat kind of get uh, control of the of the of the game early on? Because that's going to be the difference here. When it comes down to open division, right, you want to set the tone, the pace of the game very, very early on. There's not a lot of matches and there's not a lot of maps to even work with, right? So you need to be uh, on the ball. It's best of five. You don't have a whole lot of time to make it work. And so coming out of the gate fast is what both these teams need to do. And so, guys, we're seven and two at the moment for both of these teams. Uh, they need to win this just to stay, just to have a chance to get through uh, to the playoffs, to, to round 11, which is coming up next week um what do these teams really need to do as we said clash got a few new players uh, but they've got three older players who have been to the playoffs uh, several times before uh whereas team cat here yeah they've got the ex uh captain of clash so quite a clash there coming up uh, but really other than practicing <laughs> we're so far through this uh th through the open division so far and we've seen a lot of goats, a lot of heavy compositions, but we've seen some interesting tricks with, say, Symmetra and Bastion on certain maps. Do you reckon those are going to be the things that are going to uh, swing this game for either team from? I don't want to hear. I don't want to really see too much cheese. I think we, when we talk about EU, we talk about tanks. It's a. It goes back actually for a very, very long time. Think ninjas in pajamas years ago. In fact, in Overwatch's lifespan, and tanks have always been a staple of Europe, and there's a very good reason why they're very, very good at them. So I want. I think seeing goats is probably what we're going to end up seeing. Going too much into the cheese side becomes a, a thing where you're not confident in your gameplay, and when you're playing against stronger teams, you need to know how to play goats. So I expect goats to be the the flavor that we're going to get all match long and i hope we're gonna get a little bit of that zen goats action because that is in my opinion one of the strongest compositions that's out there right now so well, i'm zen gonna go a little bit middle of the ground here sorry sorry space man uh i want to go middle of the ground so definitely don't want to see cheese but what i will say is something that we've mentioned before in previous broadcasts is that the goats composition the current new meta was devised in open division and i'm hoping to see some some new strats coming out from these players we've seen some cool stuff we've seen some quad dps we've seen the may igloo we've seen a lot of interesting things so i'm hoping that we see a little less goats a little less cheese and a little more innovation a little bit more innovation and i think a uh, map choice here could be quite important we've, we've seen in the open division before where you know it goes to busan and a pole first map and uh, one of the teams wins out on that fairly convincingly. But then the team that lost gets the choice of the map next. And uh, a lot of these teams seem to have set strategies for them. You know, you've seen on Route 66, sometimes with Quad DPS, sometimes with that little May bunker. Um, uh, so how, how 
does map choice really affect how one of these teams could make a comeback after after the first control map? You'd think it could, because teams scrim to what their strengths are. The only problem is with open division, you don't know if you're drawing into the enemy team's uh, strength, right? Maybe they scrim that particular map. And so I think for a blind tournament like open division, it's it matters less so than, you know, a sort of bracket style. But it still definitely adds an impact when you have control over which map you're going to go to next. So, yes, it does provide a little bit there, but not nearly as much as it would in other tournaments. And do you agree with that, Nari? Or do you think it uh, doesn't matter so much, or, or, or it does? Uh, or... No, I would 100% agree with that. It's very situational. It comes down to both teams and what they've been practicing. Yes, you could dominate on this map, but you don't know if the other team dominates on it. It's a bit of a coin toss. Okay, well, I think my favorite team for today is, is going to be Team Cat, just for their logo, because it's so damn cute. But uh, before we get into the action, any predictions from, from you guys? That's difficult. Uh, I'm going to give it to Team Cat just because of the logo. Let, let's put it at a 3-2. The spot is very awkward and I hate being put on it, but Clash is going to have <laughs> to take it from me. I mean, we're just going for, for spice here. So one analyst on one side, the other on the other, and I think it works out evenly. Okay, so it's going to be 3-2 uh, three, three, maybe for Team Cat, maybe 3-2 for Clash, but uh, we're certainly going to have a great Clash for you viewers at home today. And to bring us in on the action here, we've got Bemi and Suns and Bommels. So, uh, Bemi, take it away. Thank you very much, folks. Uh, wonderful introduction, and I must say, Niori, you're probably going to be in for some good innovation because it's besides the new map that we're probably going to be starting on, and, you know, still things are, are yet to TBD on how to optimally go about this map, Suds. How do you feel about it? Um, I actually really like Busan. Just as with a lot of these control maps, you've got a good variety of map geometry. We get a chance to play a lot of different compositions, especially if we go to downtown. You're likely to start seeing some Winston and maybe even some uh, ranged DPS there, which is always a lot of fun. But it does look like for our first point, we are going to be starting on Mecha Base, which does lend yes. itself to those uh, GOATS compositions that our, uh, our analysts are so excited to see here. I absolutely agree, and I think also this is one of those places where I see uh, the ice walls from the May coming in effectively. So we could see that uh, May goes come into play, but uh, let's just talk about compositions and predictions right now. What do you feel like going in right now, Suds, that this is going to be? I mean, I feel like the May goats isn't a bad call. I imagine we are going to get some kind of goats composition from both of these teams, Reinhardt, Zarya, if not goats, uh, for sure. But uh, here we're going to start to see what they want to run, and it does look like that's what we're going to get. So I'm really excited to see these teams uh, go at it because uh, they should be very evenly matched, as our analyst said. This has a lot of possibility to be going to a uh, five-map series here. Well, first, before we get to the best of five, we have to handle the best of three within this set right now. And it's going into it. And looking at this... Uh, team cat sort of setup right now it's very interesting how they're about to go into it we do see the may goats coming into play is uh from team clash though that's a little more what we're familiarized with but looking at this we're seeing triple long range dps with a uh a wrecking ball into play like how what is going on here i mean that's they're just trying to uh burn down the goats before they can take position on point and we are going to see some swaps come from Team Clash, they're going to the Winston, they're gonna get a Widow of their own, as well as a Mercy to kind of give her that damage boost, have the benefit of the res, but it looks like first cap is gonna go to Team Cat, just because they were able to kind of freak out Team Clash. Okay. Fair enough, well, certainly uh, it takes a lot to scare a cat, but right now it looks like they're not going to be afraid for much longer as they are just going to be showing their fierce claws in the offensiveness of these long-range DPSs, just taking them out one by one. I mean, really no way to contest them right away once you lose that, you know, two long-range DPS you have. Yeah, absolutely. It looked like on the, as they entered the kind of point area there, Team Clash a little bit scattered. I think uh, they got thrown off their game by this uh, triple DPS composition a little bit. And now we are going to see the ult advantage on the side of Team Cat as they do come for another engage uh, Team Clash. Bacon Thief just kind of looking for something to jump here. He wants to find someone that's not just going to run away from him immediately. 
Yeah, absolutely. And the target prioritization from Team Cat has been super strong just working on it. But right now, there's Korea taking out a double kill. And that's going to be strong. The res comes into play. And right off the bat, Vinny is going to be able to return. But that is making the being able to gang up on the mercy and that's gonna be fine for them they're finally gonna be able to turn this point around they just have to deal with a couple of things real quick thanks to the bubble of the winston the uh zenyatta was trying to make sure that they live through this but they are going to be traded out by a so but looks like this point is going to be in their control after all suds yeah good job though by a so there to uh just kind of stall that out on the wrecking ball and get that percentage to continue to build but now 10% for Team Clash, who are going to have the Diva Bomb, the Mercy Ult, and uh, probably Sights here at the start of this fight. Sights is kind of huge here at Mecha Base. It is a big open field, but there's a lot of corridors to hide behind. Dropping the Lion Mine field. Interesting call. And so it's going to go down right now to Fierce right away. And, uh, I mean, what's the plan going on here? They have, uh, they're probably just waiting for the visor to go out, or what's going yeah, on here? Sides? I believe they are just waiting for that, uh, infrasites to go away. And I, the placement of that, uh, minefield, while strange, I think was just to kind of deny that, uh, position that the Widow and the Zenyatta want to be sitting in. But now there's a Bob on point along with us, so. See what the Bob can do right here. Once again, that beauty of that ult from the Ashes, able to just contest last... 15 seconds and do what they need to do. Here's just dropping the alt right away and just trying to make sure that they don't try to touch this point anytime soon. But I mean, at the moment, the team fight's still looking very much in favor for Finny, and they're just going to rush in with the Zenyatta alt just to be able to turn that back around and take back the percentage lead for them, Suds. So looking very close, but uh, ooh, hello. Finny does take him down, but they drop the Dragon Strike, does push them back. I mean, right now, Bacon Thieves all by themselves, very low in health, and they're just going to. Run back and regroup with the team, and the long-range TPS battle is just engaging at the moment. Yeah, this is a very different kind of fight than we typically see on this map. They are going to res Kriya there, but, uh, I mean, everybody just spread out around the point looking for these sight lines instead of the typical brawls that we're used to seeing here between the big tank compositions. And now, 96% uh, for Team Cat. We're in last fight territory. Fierce is going to be able to touch points, though. For how long, though? Dragon Strike does allow them to touch it for a little bit longer. Fierce does go down. Kree is able to take out Finny, though. That's one of the many long-range DPS, though. That's, I guess, one of the benefits of running a triple DPS, is that you're going to have one DPS out of them, along with that Bob. Nicely done for Rhea. Yes. Able to charge it very, very quickly. And they're just going to go ahead and take this first map in a very unique fashion. Talk yeah. about innovation, Suds. Holy crap, that is not what we were expecting to see <laughs> when we started out on Mecha Base, but I can't say I'm not uh, pretty pleased with it. I'm glad we're seeing something a little bit different as, uh, you know, we've been seeing a yeah. lot of goats for a very <laughs> long time. And uh, now we are going to be going to, I believe, this is a sanctuary temple. temple? one of those uh the Ascended one with the big something. drum is what yeah. I, like. I call it drum circle all the time <laughs> but um i want i'm interested to see if team cat's gonna continue to run these dps compositions it does look like they're showing us triple dps once again the double sniper this time reagan's on the tracer um on the other side worse is gonna run that hanzo kriya on the ash and bacon thief actually on the orissa so uh completely different tank compositions from what we typically see here uh we'll see we are gonna have bacon thief set up on this point very early yeah and uh it's interesting that they're just rushing towards this point i would have assumed that maybe with the orissa shield you you hold that stone slab and use your long range dps to just sort of clear out the point before you even go towards it but i guess the diva allows it and kind of this bunker composition or the treehouse is just going to be able to handle this at the moment they're sticking together as a group which is good but i mean reagan's is just going nuts right now just bathing people and just dropping a lot of stuff Paul's bottom on top of that. Not going to find any results, but they're still showing up on the kill feed, Suds. Being able to take out one by one. And honestly, this, I mean, this Tracer play, the switch onto it, masterful. Yeah, Reagan's doing a great job on that Tracer, built that Pulse Bomb so quickly, and getting a couple of uh, melee kills there as well. Just that last little bit of damage with the with the uh, Pistol Whip, and you love to see that. Uh, but now, we are going to see swaps come in from Clash. Bacon Thief over to the Winston, worse onto the Zarya. They're actually going with a uh, Winston Moira Goats composition here, trying to 
do something against this long range dive. I don't know if it's gonna work for them as this Dragon Strike comes out. Dragon Strike comes out, kind of splits the team up, and John is able to get some benefit out of that. Kriya going down right away due to the Storm Arrow, and this is pretty huge. Sound Barrier comes into play, but I don't know what they're trying to go for. It's kind of a little all over the place. They're seeing they're just trying to win the team fight overall. Looks like they may be able to just get this cap on it. Self Destruct Sequence not finding much, and they do lose Keepa, so that could be a heap of trouble for them at the moment, not be able to have their support for this. So it's able to get the double kill, looking very strong. But I mean, a Wrecking Ball with the Zenyatta, how much can you do? I mean, there's lack of mobility. Finny does come into play, but there is the Landmines coming in. Ooh, if it actually finds a couple of things, it could be huge. It does allow them to move back and forth a little bit safely from the sh sh uh, from the drum. And oh my gosh, they managed to hold on to it. And Looks like this is going to be them turning the point back around and still keeping on that percentage lead right now, Suds. Yeah, really good by them to kind of slow that fight down and come back to end up winning it, only allowing about 30% to tick up 14 Clash. But I'm not entirely sure that they had to let that point flip there. I feel like they could have uh, continued to contest, but now they are going to have the Transcendence, another Dragon Strike for John. Uh, but the... Coalescence and the Primal Rage. Dragon Strike's gonna come out looking for worse, but uh, not getting anything just yet. Ooh, but there's a Pulse Bomb at the end, and that is gonna be a deadly end of the rainbow as uh, the Dragon Strikes keep on through. And they also do get a D-Mech as well. Bacon Thief, I don't know what happened there. I guess they're just trying to regroup and they maybe overextended with the jump or something along the lines of that. I, I think that is what happened. Bacon Thief just trying to reset was probably pretty low already. Didn't want to uh, stagger himself anymore. But now they're going to need to get here quick. They do have the rally now in addition to those two ults that they were unable to use there. But both support ults online for Cat. They should have plenty of sustain to uh, make it through this. Yeah, let's see how they do. The rally does allow them a lot of that, and they already just take this point right away. They drop the landmines, however, at the moment, it does allow them a little bit more zoning to be able to do it. But ooh, a Soul's getting caught off guard, and they get a nice shield stun. They go down right away thanks to the fears following up those missiles. They get Keepa does get the res on to name, but is it gonna be enough? I mean Fierce already go John 9 goes down already, and yeah, they're tactically retreating already now, Suds. So this is uh I mean, they're smart to disengage, but this is looking like they're taking this fight all the way to spawn right now, Team Clash. Yeah, they are going to go ahead and just push spawn, which I always love seeing that aggression. Uh, and that was a good fight for them to win. They got the point cap early, which kind of allows them a little bit more freedom to... Uh, look for those picks off the point and it's really interesting how team cat is playing this allowing those caps more often than not just because their ranged damage dealers can't stay on point but dragon strike comes out right into the middle of team clash isn't gonna get anything here a lot of damage but the sound barrier does cancel that the transcendence just trying to just push this team a uh, so just trying to go through no shields so they have to fall back a little bit so a little bit awkward there there's a huge grab they just come right back out and they go down one by one it's looking pretty huge everybody's kind of just put all over the place and this is really awkward now for uh the side of team cats they're just going to try to stall and try to contest but looking like you know Drum is going to be pretty much their map. And we got 1-1 one -one situation, Suds. Yeah, uh, really good by Team Clash to kind of continue to take that fight very close to Team Cat's spawn there. They were able to keep them completely away from the point and uh, just kind of get those kills one by one, find those long-range damage dealers that without the chance to kind of get into positions and set up a crossfire, they just weren't very effective. And now... That's going to allow us to go to downtown where we were talking about. We see compositions like this more often, uh, and I expect to continue to see them come out, at least from Team Cat, as John 9 swapping over to that Pharah here. We are going to get uh, the double sniper on the side of Clash with Freyu there on the Ana. So a uh, little bit of a different support matchup here. We'll see whether the Bionic Grenade or the Discord Orb has the effect that these teams need. Bio grenade, I I love the bio grenade. I'm a huge fan of it. I think if you can take advantage and sort of zon all together, that could be great. But I mean, with a composition like this, I think the Discord Orb could come out on top. But at the moment, Team Clash looking pretty strong. They don't even need that bio grenade just taking out everybody from a distance. I mean, they really enjoy their long range DPS. And uh, man, I I if I was a win if I was their main tank, I would feel so safe right now, Suds. Absolutely, yeah. 
Kriya doing a really great job there on the Widow. It's great to see that even though a lot of these DPS players are only getting to play things like Zarya and Brig lately, they can still swap onto those uh, high skill aim heroes when they need to. Finifap's doing the same, getting that kill as Creo trades for John 9, who's going to get rezzed up here. <laughs> the whole interaction of that kill feed was absolutely canceled because of those rezzes. Oh my gosh. Well, right now they're just kind of like going back and forth, doing a couple of dry pushes here and there. And what do you want? What do you, what, what kind of alts are they trying to look for? And what, is, what are their goals with their alts? I mean, I'm a little confused with the way they're playing this. They're setting up these huge kind of surroundings of the of Team Clash is Team Cat, and now they've got three of their members kind of trapped back Holy here away God. from the point. They're all just going to get wiped out immediately. Yeah, movie theater is not a safe space uh, because there's, it's not like Blizzard World. You can't just go into those rooms and find your way another exit. It's just you go in there or you leave out. It's two people enter, one person leaves. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And Kree is going to continue to pop off with yeah. these Widow headshots, doing such a great job of just denying any kind of space to Team Cat, who now is going to make the swap. Uh, Reagan's onto the Ash. John 9 is onto this McCree, as he has been for a little while now. So trying to take control of this high ground, but the Dragon Strike is going to come out. I'm not really sure about that. <laughs> yep, I'm... I'm a little bit questioning it myself. I guess they were trying to see if there's any sneaky plays coming in from a trace or anything, but they don't really have that right now. Kriya's still popping off. Damage boost or not for the Mercy, they're going crazy. Aso's going to go crazy as well. Drops the self to charge sequence, gets rid of the mines. Nothing much else left, but it does allow Bacon Thief to just keep on pushing through. I am worried that we're may see a 0 to 100 here. We're just seeing them trying to push through, but I mean, this is a little bit of an unconventional composition, so this kind of doesn't allow anything for them to do. It's not like Mecha Base. There's not a lot of places to hide and run, and Bacon Thief just on that Primal Rage, not enough damage to deal with so much health going on right now. Uh, so it's just trying to get some zoning and this is very interesting. They're very, like, they're, they're kind of just trying to cover so much ground and multitask as a team that it kind of forgoes the whole idea of the team's trend. The whip will go down, and Team Clash is going to go ahead and just take this series two to one. Yeah, wow. Huge map win there for Team Clash. It was really interesting because obviously when we started on busan they were just gonna play that zen goats composition then they see the long range dps come out from team cat and they go oh i guess if that's what we're gonna do we're just gonna do it better so <laughs> if you uh, want to play it like that yeah exactly so team clash doing a great job of kind of beating team cat at their own game there uh taking a lot of liberties and showing a lot of aggression being able to not quite spawn trap, but really push their advantage uh, to can prevent Team Cat from getting any kind of map control with those compositions. Yeah, absolutely. And it just seems so interesting. So, okay, we saw roughly kind of a mirror comp with the triple DPS or just essentially the long range DPS. What do you think that made Team Clash be able to overcome it and reverse sweep on Busan? Um, I mean, I think it was just kind of recognizing what their opponents, how their opponents were playing, because we saw they were playing very scattered. They weren't grouping up, and so using those long-range yeah. DPS is a lot more effective. And honestly, the other one is Kriya just popping off, like doing yeah. such a great job there on that Widow, getting tons of headshots and stopping a lot of those fights before they even happened. Yeah, and the Winston zoning, too, is kind of huge as well. The Primal Rage coming into play. I mean, they just kind of did what Wrecking Ball was doing, but I guess a little more effectively. It's a tried-and-true method. But anyways, speaking of tried-and-true, we're good to see a good old favorite. Route 66 coming up. Escort map. It's nice, big, and open starting out, and then it gets a little more closer near the end of the point. And how are we feeling between these two teams? Looking at their behavior and play style now, Suds. Well, I'm not going to be surprised at all if we start to see some of that quadruple DPS come out that has become <laughs> so very popular yep. here on Route 66. And uh, clearly these teams like to play a lot of DPS, which I'm not complaining about. We haven't seen a lot of it for it's a while. It's refreshing. Yeah, the question is um, when the time comes, because there's a reason GOATS is such a popular composition. It's the correct choice in a lot of situations right now in the current meta. So I think the question is going to be when the time comes that 
goats is the swap you need to make is team cap able to make that swap because it looks like clash was going to be comfortable on it but we haven't seen cap even make the attempt so far yeah it it, it seems like however uh we're we're gonna see let's see here looking at this is gonna be pretty standard unique dive which is sort of uh worse on that tracer okay so looking at this help me suds i'm an absolute noob what are we what is the target prioritization in this situation so i mean team cat is gonna need to take out uh bacon thief there on the main tank as well as try to get somebody on to Kriya. Fierce is going to be just looking to uh, keep them up. But now we do have this quad DPS coming out. Aso actually going to swap onto the Wrecking Ball. John 9 onto the Farah. So just triple DPS here. A couple of ranged heroes. And uh, no Widow to deal with that Farah. It's going to be pretty much up to Kriya to take down John 9 here. Seems like they're sticking to their guns on the triple DPS. I like it. We'll see how it works for them. So right now, kind of all by themselves, just playing a big old game of distraction. Bacon Thief taking a lot of chip damage at the moment. They are able to get around to the first part of Big Earl's or a little bit close to it at the very least. So just still taking a lot of damage. And this is, my goodness, so much offensiveness. Vinny able to get Kriya though. That's going to be pretty huge for Team Cat. They're just going to keep pushing through. Oh, but it looks like it might be a so going down very soon. But no, they managed to live through it. And they are pushing through. And it looks like, you know, Rhea, nice target prioritization. Able to get those supports in the back line. As opposed to, I guess, some kind of line of some sort going on right now. John 9 will get the double kill. Looking pretty good. And they're just going to be able to wipe it out. And my goodness, they, uh, they've they been playing a game of cups, if you will. Just sort of switching around everything and putting in people in different places. Yeah, that's what uh, Team Cat seems to be excelling at, is kind of moving all parts around uh, so that it's hard for the enemy team to really focus anyone down. That's why they were having such good success with the Widow, but Fierce is going to get an early kill onto John 9 to open this fight up. It is a pretty huge pick, especially with the fact that the barrage was just right around the corner, but I mean, Rhea's kind of close to the bob. Could be huge if Freyu didn't just go ahead and pop off and cast a curse me. Looking right now, they're doing great. Bacon Thief goes down, but I mean, it's in Yada right now. The Discord orbs are insane. They're just going crazy. Oh my gosh, I haven't shown, seen a Zenyatta show up with the kill feet this much in Open Division at all. <laughs> yeah, we've got some uh, some real coming out for you. But now, almost six ultimates online for Team Cat. I expect them to kind of blow these into this fight. Hopefully, yeah. when it, it makes swaps once they cap first point here. Who knows? You never know with these teams right now. They uh, they are they have certainly been unpredictable. Dropping Bob, see what he can do. Just gonna have them hang out in the back of the payload. Fierce is gonna drop the self destruct. Bob eats most of the damage and looks fine. Just gonna have Fierce just hang out in the back of Big Earls and looking good here. We'll see how Rhea's gonna be doing. They're just starting to dynamite. See what they can find. Just hanging out with their best buddy Finny and see if they can find any results right now. And over here on the end near. The actual big girls itself, John 9 trying to find some results, just hanging near the choke, seeing if they can pick off anybody. Looking pretty good. Finny and John just been working overtime, looking good here. They're still pushing on through right now, and they're looking like they're going to be able to finally win this team fight. There's the Barrage come in, and they get the double kill. That looks good. The triple as well, and that's going to be the icing on top a lot of alts that they had to drop but i mean in a long point they did get within the time bank and that is exactly what john nine was looking for he lives before he was able to find it but this barrage just such a huge impact wow. into that fight was able to allow them to cap that first point and now they because that fight ended so close to the point they're able to take a lot of space here on second and try to deny any uh engage here from team clash but they're actually gonna try to just move around that uh defender's right side and move straight to the payload and uh, prevent it from making any more progress Right in the Winston Ghost right now as well, and they're just going to drop that alley. There's the Transcendence coming into play, and John Nine's able to find Yoshio. This is looking pretty good, and then Rhea's just going to push as much as they can. See if they can hunt down some kind of crazy scientist going around just using the Tesla Cannon. And it looks like they're going to be able to hold it down. They're kind of spread out all over the place, and I wouldn't be surprised if they pulled their distracting maneuver again to have John Nine have such a successful uh, barrage at the moment. They they don't mind taking time with these team fights. John Nine able to get that's pretty huge at the moment. I mean, like I said, these distractions seem pretty good for them right now. They have them back up in the corner awkwardly. 
Yeah, John Nine's got this barrage again. He's gonna be looking for it. That Diva Bomb's gonna come out, not gonna get anything as they finally jump out of that corner and start to engage in this fight. Oh yeah, and also Frey, you dropping the coalescence. It's looking pretty strong. You're able to get the double kill, but he does go down. I mean, the landmines are gonna not buy them too much of anything. Barrage drops in. John goes down right away. Interesting call to use the barrage. Uh, and uh, so we'll at least get one beyond the grave. I, um, okay, suds. Yeah, um, swamps are coming in. We're gonna see this make outs from Team Cat as they uh, look to take control of this payload again. They need to find somebody to rush down and just kill, uh, but they're gonna get grabbed here. Huge eyes while here. It does have them go around, buys them a little bit of time. But they are going down one by one. And uh, while it's a huge ice wall, it's a huge grab as well as they were able to just simply walk around that ice wall and just take them out right away. I mean, they just got out a couple of alts. Um, I mean, they just switched, so suds. This is going to be a little bit difficult alt economy-wise to push through. Absolutely. They made pretty much a full team swap. I believe only uh, Name staying on him there. And yeah. uh, at the same time, Freyu doing such a good job, but we're gonna get the engage with another Diva Bomb coming out from Fierce. Seltzer Truck sequence, not gonna be able to find results again. I think it's just usually a zoning tool just to push them out. They're hiding holes at the moment on Team Cats and just get them out to play with them and take them down one by one. But so takes out worse and that's showing up. Kill Feed Names able to get Kriya looking pretty good. And I mean, they're getting good studs. The target prioritization's finally looking good here. They're just sticking together as a group, just going all right let's focus on this and now they're going to stagger kill fierce and now we're in motion here we got business going on yeah that was much better from them they were able to kind of avoid that diva bomb and then find the engage that they wanted onto team clash now team cat gonna have the ult economy in their favor uh five ults online for them only missing that transcendence and they're just pushing into the uh the beat and this primal rage yeah, we'll have to see if they're able to do it. OT, they can't touch the point, and even when they get back to it, it's going to be only 90 seconds. Uh, Blizzard is going to get eaten as well, by the way. John not going to be able to get that. It's huge indeed, but however, right now, it looks like Blizzard's not that big of a deal. It was just only a dis diversion. Team Cat so cleverly once again causing a distraction, dropping their Blizzard all just so that they can ice wall zone out everybody and just take this fight. Uh, that's a team fight, and... We got 90 more seconds at least of this game. Absolutely, and such a great shatter coming out. So they're in the uh, defender spawn out into kind of the path of the payload. Got three and they were able to clean that up really well. But now Worst is going to have this Graviton Surge again. Uh, Fierce may be able to build up this bomb to combo with it. Uh, they're going to have support ults on the side of Team Cat, however, as a so just tries to take some space here on the third point. His team's gonna help him uh, with the cart just kind of following behind for the time being. Nice target prioritization from Team Clash. Able to knock out that Reinhardt shield and the Reinhardt themselves as well. And I mean, this is looking like as far as they're gonna be able to push it, but I mean, this has been a pretty valiant, valiant effort, especially with the fact about the amount of hero switching that they've gone through at the moment. Just be able to, I think we've seen three different compositions coming up from Team Cat. Just being able to push on here, doing what they can. They have a couple ults up their sleeve, so I'm not going to discount them. Let's see if John actually drops a Blizzard this time. They are dropping self destruct sequence. Could be huge. Ice Wall comes into play. Not going to find any results, but a pin comes in for Bacon D. Able to find Heepa. He's looking pretty strong for them. Ooh, the rally from outside. Ursh, huge. Oh, back and right around and so it. Some good results. Hey, follow Ice Wall, and they're just trying to punch in their way to pushing this payload. 10 seconds left, sound barrier. They're just doing what they can, but I mean, this is just a push around the corner. This is looking pretty scary for them. Kriya does go down and yeah, there they go. They finally go down by one, just taking their time with this team fight. They just go like, you know, we're gonna get this into OT. We just gotta do what we can and hopefully it will be good enough. And they're pushing through. We're gonna see if they're able to win this and get stopped. It, actually, if the payload stops here, they may be, I don't know. Yeah, they're in pretty good position having pushed it to third, but they really want this final cap. And now only Bacon Thief's ult on the side of Team Clash to try to stop this. Uh, Reagans is gonna pop the rally, get that armor up for Team Finifabs with another grab, catches the enemy team. Huge grab, they're gonna be able to follow up on that. Nobody just rushing right on in there. They were waiting for their right time and there it is. And so it's just gonna be able to follow up with Fierce. Nobody's able to touch the point. They're able to get it after OT and I am... Um, 
into the Duly audience. impressed by Finny with just the huge grabs just coming out of nowhere. Yeah, he built that up so quickly. He had used his grab in the previous fight to help his team win it. And then he had it up again yeah. just for that final push. And it, just such a good job. The Maywall came out and blocked the Shatter from Bacon Thief. So really great play there on that last fight from Team Cat. Um, but if <clears throat> we can real quick, I want to talk quickly about Team Clash's defense Please. there at the start of second. We saw them kind of hiding there in that corner uh, as they were just kind of keeping the payload from moving. And I think that was really smart of them. It prevented the uh, sight lines of those ranged DPS of Team Cat from really finding anything. And since the payload was still in that little uh, initial entryway, they had control of it. The payload wasn't going to move and they were able to just hide in there, not let the damage come in. If Team Cat tried to engage on them, they were just going to swing them down with that high damage kind of uh, tank composition. So really smart from them. I'm excited to see what they want to pull out on their offense. But Team Cat's defense, we can take a look at here. Still going with that triple DPS in the Orisa. Um, what do you what do you think of this one here, Bemi? Well, looking at it here, Suds, uh, I'm 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 a little more familiarized with this kind of composition, just hanging out on top. Oh well, there's triple DPS, and I'm not really surprised here. They're starting out with that, but like you said earlier, it is the disengage and reengaging that is just shows the signs of a good team, and Team Clash certainly showed that. So we'll see if Team Cat has that just as much on defense. What do you want to see them try to focus on? Is the pharmacy? Is the Urissa? What do you want to see? Because R.A. Rhea is popping off with the, taking out Kriya. Yeah, you definitely need to focus on the DPS here. The Orisa is kind of a bait because she's so difficult to kill. If that's who you choose to focus on, it's just going to take a lot of your time and cooldowns in order to do it. So uh, the DPS is kind of the linchpin of this composition, and they're going to be able to kind of hold them in these uh, places where they just don't have sightlines as Fierce tries oh. to push this card a little bit. Yeah, push the cart just as much as they can. Finny's able to take out the worst, but Yoshi was able to bring them back. Can worst be able to exact their revenge? I don't know yet, but Bacon Thief, nice little flank. They're going to be able to overwhelm that Widowmaker. Great stuff. The Winston is supposed to be able to pressure off those DPSs, but a so is able to follow up. Looking very strong, and they're keeping them alive. Looking great, and they are just going to be able to take this team fight pretty straightforward and head on. Able to demac Fierce. Gonna be able to stagger the kill a little bit. I mean, they got a lot of cover to work with their triple DPS lineup right now, Suds. Yeah, I really like what they're doing there. We did see Bacon Thief kind of dislodge the composition, but he got a little too deep and got burned down by all of that DPS as well as the Orisa. Kriya is going to have to start to find some picks if they want to uh, take uh, move this cart anymore, but uh, Hepa on that Mercy using the res real effectively, but here comes the engage. They're gonna Whoa. get a couple. Yeah, quite a couple indeed. Worst is able to get a triple kill. Oh my gosh, they just take out the entire team. They're like, you know what? You know what? I'm going to drop Valkyrie. Worst, do your worst. Yeah, worst really popping off there on the Hans. Showing us Kriya's not the only one hitting these headshots as we see him just decimate the enemy team here to allow them to push that payload. Uh, but now we are going to get swaps from Team Cat. They are going to move over onto this Zenyatta Goats composition, try to deal with the dive coming in from Team Clash. Fair enough. Good on the switch up, but unfortunately, all of the economy once again is going to come into play. There's Dragon Strike coming in right now. They're going to just use that a little bit of distraction and see if they can do some damage. Storm Arrow just coming in. I like the patience on that one. They're just going to be able to try to do their best they can to just pinpoint exact locations of enemies and just flanking on around. Pushing on through, seeing they can find any results along with just Kree in the background. Seeing what they can find. Do manage to find a couple of kills along with the help. And their self destruct sequence coming in the kill feed. Finally taking out Name. And it looks like Team Clash dropping a couple alts. Looking fine here. Not really a complaint as well because, you know, Suds, they, you know, Team Cat switched over. So, uh, I mean, that was kind of going to be a given that that team fight was going to win. Yeah, at that point, they really just needed to build up some uh, ult economy. And now we are going to get the swaps in from Clash. So, uh, main goats for them. Uh, also, I think the Diva Bomb coming out from them was a little bit late, but I guess if they were gonna swap it, that's that's a reason enough to go ahead and uh, throw that out there. Uh, Team Cat staggering onto that point at the end has put themselves in kind of a bad position here, but Aso wanted to make this swap onto the Reinhardt, so now they're gonna be able to kind of go shield to shield here. 
Yeah, I like this a lot, and it's going to even out the uh, alt fight a little bit. Freyu still having that advantage, but the grab could be used coming in from Finny. We'll see how it works out. It looks like the Mei is trying their best. They do manage to grab him, and there's the Transcendence coming out from Freyu. Good stuff to keep the team alive, but can he respond in a quick enough fashion? The Ice Wall is going to be able to help out. Freyu's just going to be trying to throw you this, that, and the other thing along with their Discord. They're able to find John 9 looking pretty good right now. And they are going to be able to just pressure on that shield. The ice walls from the mates are going to be great as well. Just doing back and forth. But the show is able to get that double kill looking great. Ooh. Sound barrier plus earth shatter. Huge. Able to follow up on it. And uh, worse is just going to back away and run away. Name is just trying to take names right now, Suds. Yeah, absolutely. Taking those last few kills on the Zenyatta. Gets a nice little kick on that Zarya. Finish her off there. Get out And of here. now he's going to have the Transcendence. Finny Faps with the Graviton. Fierce has a Graviton of his own, but uh, they're going to have to... We're going to see who lands it better here as they decide to attack from this high yeah. ground. Uh, Fierce caught out a little bit from his team. Yeah, Fierce caught out a little bit. Huge ice wall coming in from John 9. That was great of them, but we'll see how they're able to respond. Big and Thief drops in their shatter. They do manage to at least find one person, but is it enough? That was so it's gonna get it. Oh my gosh, they get pinned, and then the so be able to fire strike to get the Korea. Uh, oh my gosh, they are just gonna be able to wipe out this team very well. I mean, normally the ice wall is supposed to keep you protected and safe from the enemy, but they just locked themselves in in that bear cage. Yeah, that was a really great ice wall from John 9 to uh, kind of single out Fierce because that's exactly who they had to kill. And if they can do it again, that's what they want to do. But uh, Finny Fap's going to look for a grab of his own. A uh, Sos got this uh, Earth Shatter. Oh, you Earth Shatter with the ice wall coming in. Transcendence is also happening. And then we got a little ice rink fighting stage happening right now. Going through the back and forth. But I mean, at the moment, Team Clash able to still stick together as a group and looking pretty good at the moment just to go ahead and start pushing this payload finally once and for all getting through this awkward choke but i don't think this is the last we're seeing team cat at this point yeah and it's really interesting that the may ult is such a good substitution for the diva ult to combo with that graviton because once you get everybody frozen there's no shields to deal with there's no kind of abilities to worry about and you can just swing into that graviton to get the kills but a big Whoa. earth shatter huge earth shatter worst is able to get john nine that's actually kind of huge because john nine can't drop that blizzard anymore so this is going to be pretty much them uh, on the side of Team Clash, punching their ticket over to get this last point and within the time bank as well. So now they got just a few extra seconds and every second counts in a game like Overwatch sets. Absolutely. Two minutes for them. That was such a good Earth Shatter to just kind of grew up that uh, engagement coming in from Team Cat. And now their uh, Clash going to be able to take up the positioning that they want on top of this semi trailer as they look for a early pick here onto Team Cat. Yeah, they're trying to see what they can do with Team Cat. Able to zone out Finny one more again, but there's the Blizzard coming in from both sides! Who's gonna get more Frozen, though? There is a U... Oh, no! Oh, my gosh, we're able to block out the way, but the Earth Shatter's gonna be able to follow up with that, and that's gonna be huge! Oh, my gosh, Team Cat's able to stop them dead in their tracks right now, Suds. Yeah, you saw it again there. Great combo with that Graviton and the uh, Blizzard. But as you said, worse, such a good job to block the charge with that ice block just in time. And now, oh no, Aso's going to get singled out from his team. Yeah, Aso's going to get singled out right away. And then Rhea goes down one by one. And the Transcendence spray you just nicely done. Just, just kind of encouraging their team to just go aggressive. Go, no punishment if they go overextending. They're nearby some health. And I mean, they're going to take that signal and run with the torch. Absolutely, they're going to go ahead and try to take this aggression, push the enemy spawn. They're sitting on a Graviton and an Earth Shatter, so they've got a lot of tools to just kind of stop Team Cat yeah. in their tracks as they're only going to have their two support ultimates online for this fight. Yeah, but we're going to see how the sound barrier can do it. It could eat it. They're going to run into it. Grab is going to come in, but they're going to see the Transcendence come out and keep everybody alive. Looks pretty solid. John 9 does get caught in the Earth Shatter. But they're able to stay alive. Back out with the ice block. Looking pretty good. And then so is able to get a double kill. This could be where Team Cat takes this win. Freyu is able to delay the fight a little bit. Huge grab though. Able to just wrap up and take out whatever's remaining. Yoshio's trying to contest as much as he can. Wick is going to go down. No time to touch it though. It is going to be one for one. As Team Cat keeps this even steep. And that was such a good fight win from Team Cat. They're winning these fights. 
when they need them regardless of ult advantage a lot of times both their final attack there to push it in the third as well as that last defense just such a good job to clutch out these fights when they need it and we are gonna see this play from worse one more time just popping off on the hanzo hitting tons so of nice. headshots um, that was that was a lot of fun that map right there Bimmy. It was honestly the series has already been fun, but uh, let's get uh, let's get some opinions from our eyes on the sky. This is ground control reaching to space, man. Do you copy? Oh, I do indeed, Bemi. Thank you very much for the uh, very fun <laughs> hand over there. And <laughs> wow, I mean, where do we start with that game? Let's uh, let's start on the first map here. Let's start on Busan. Uh, Mecha base. We saw Trip DPS coming out the door there from from Team Cat. Uh, Lafon, talk us through that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess the beginning is as good a place to start as any, so that does uh, that does add up. The triple, the, it was triple DPS. They ran uh, basically three snipers, four if you count Zen, who can shoot cross map, um, and they put a lot of pressure. Uh, immediately, what happens though is team is uh, uh, Clash sees that and they immediately get out of dodge. They go switch over to a dive ish comp. They're on the double sniper uh, with the tank comp with the with the Winston Diva. So they're running, you know, sort of uh, for pressure dives and then trying to hope their snipers get. Uh, pickoffs that first map wasn't that or that first sub map wasn't that great for them because uh, they were unable to really get any sort of pressure moving forward and then it's a struggle from there right they do a bit a bit of a, a bit of a better job rather on the remaining two sub maps but that for that first one it almost seemed like uh like Craig quite, quite hadn't warmed up on that widowmaker yet wasn't really hitting those shots and for for team cat it, it was much better for them I, I have to say that particular composition was uh interesting I don't necessarily think that the way Clash went about trying to counter it was the right way of doing so. When you're running that pressure dive and your Winston and Diva are playing so far apart from each other and you're just forcing your supports to sort of try and keep them up, it's a real, real struggle. And uh, so, you know, Clash uh, understandably lost that first uh, sub map. Yeah, running those three snipers and then you've got the Mercy that needs to be bouncing of them and then they're at three separate places on the map and then you've still got your Zenyatta who would be putting a lot more pressure or a lot more healing onto his tanks because Mercy's busy zipping between the, the snipers like it can be a very chaotic composition and if you're not playing it accurately then it's it's not going to go too well and yet it still worked out for them because it wasn't efficiently counted so compositional swap ups and decision making is so important in this game like you need to understand why you're running a don't just run it because a counters b therefore i win right it's it's so much more in depth than that yeah we went on to route 66 after that and um i mean we, we thought we we're going to see a lot of goats today we saw perhaps a little less than we, we thought we would uh but there were some really interesting points there i mean cat's defense there i, I love the erisa play um some standout players john nine on, on the farrow there as well um now route 66 i mean wasn't too much of a change from Busan there, except for the very end. Do you want to talk us through uh, some of the goings on on that map? So basically what I noticed and some information that we had from the team, I'm going to use John Nine as an example, stuck out. Um, on the team sheet that they gave us, it says that he never played off tank before he joined the team. He used to be a flex DPS player. And you'll see during this game, he didn't play off tank. And what I really want to highlight here is it seems to me that they weren't playing standardized comps it was more a case of playing to their own strengths now this is a bit of a double-edged sword so we can play goats because goats is the superior composition and therefore we should do better but as i stated before a beats b doesn't necessarily work if you can't play the composition correctly you're not going to do well so it seems to me that what they did was they made the choice to rather play their uh, or put their players on heroes that they are more familiar with rather than trying to run a set composition and it worked out very well for them on route 66 yes towards the end they did swap off onto that goat's composition they had the spawn advantage and it was a lot easier for them to kind of regroup and the narrow hallways the, the goat's comp worked out a lot better for them and I, I, of course it was the may goats uh, mirrored but leading up to that they were basically just running what they were comfortable on and some fights it works some fights they they didn't work uh but ultimately it seems to be working for them it does indeed and uh, i've got it on uh, good authority that we're going to be going to volskaya next uh, interesting map choice there uh, do you think we're going to see much of the same lafon or are they gonna uh, six more goats orientated compositions i mean saying much of the same can be literally anything because we've seen everything from triple sniper <laughs> to 
May goats. We had proper goats for a little bit. And then, of course, the double sniper dive. We actually saw some tracer uh, get played a little bit on Busan as well. So when you ask me that question, I can say yes, totally wholeheartedly, because it <laughs> literally means uh, absolutely nothing in regards to these teams. Um, I would expect to see more Widowmaker, though. Both these teams have sh shown that they're willing to pull it out, and they're both very competent at it. Uh, Volskaya has historically had a lot of great Widow sightlines uh, and uh, can continue to execute on that. So I would not be surprised to see more Widow gameplay or, or, or more compositions similar to that heading in to Volskaya. We might see a little bit of bunker comp as well, possibly with the Arissa and the Junkrat, and then having the Widowmaker uh, set up, specifically now on defense, obviously. We'll have the, the Junkrat and the Arissa by the stairs and the, the Widowmaker all the way on the other side of the map for uh, added sight lines. That's a possibility. We might even see a little bit of Farah. But as Lafon says, yes, very much so much of the same. So uh, lastly, just before we get back in the action, uh, any changes on your predictions? Or are you guys going to stick to your guns? Uh, I have no reason to change yet. We're one one, so I think I think I'm gonna stay with uh, with Clash taking it. Yeah, we're, we're pretty safe. Uh, the, the the meows have it. Okay, right. Well, we'll, we'll see who's gonna win out here. Whether uh, whether Clash are gonna be the champions. Whether Team Cat really do have nine lives. So uh, to take it away, uh, Bemi, Suds and Bubbles, uh, go for it. We're going to go for it indeed, and it seems like there was a good observation there, Suds. I would love to get your opinion on. Is that we talk, I totally forgot about this, but yeah, sometimes comfort picks are just kind of a strong suit in, in some teams, and it seems like you know they know when their comfort picks aren't working, but how do you feel about starting on comfort picks? I mean, I think for a lot of teams, as they said, that's kind of the way to go. If the meta comp isn't something you're comfortable with at all, your comfort picks are just going to work better for you, and especially if it's a composition that other teams aren't getting the chance to ever really scrim against, that puts you at an interesting advantage because they have to kind of theorycraft in the moment of what they need to actually defeat that composition if it right. is effective against what they're running. Yeah, it's it's really interesting, and I kind of like that idea because, like, you know, goats. We 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 talk, we joke about how much it it just basically anybody can do it, but actually, in in reality, it's it's very hard to synergize and coordinate a triple tank triple support lineup. It's very unorthodox and different in that matter. But uh, it's false guy here. I do agree with Lafon. We're definitely going to see some Widowmaker. Uh, good observation from them. And uh, we're we're seeing we're seeing the widow coming in from the defense at the very least, and uh, oh yeah, well we're gonna see all the long range DPS. Not much difference here, except for instead of yeah, it's the Winston. So this is very much what they did in Busan downtown. Yeah, it's very similar to that as well. I believe this is about what they were running on uh, Mecha base as well. We have Team Cat here defending in the blue. Uh, they are going to keep Hep on that Mercy, who has been getting just tons of reses onto these ranged DPS, which is so, so impactful in these uh, fights when all you have to take them out with is the Widowmaker on the opposing team. So we are going to get a uh, double sniper comp, it looks like, coming out from Team Clash to try to counter this here. Let's see who has the high ground here. Uh, Star Wars references aside. And uh, we'll see what they do, because this is going to be interesting how the Winston dives into the situation. Like, who did they choose the zone? Do they choose to, like, overwhelm the people on the high ground on the right with the Zenyatta? Or do they choose to overwhelm the long-range DPS hanging out over there? But uh, on, on the second floor, but it doesn't seem to be the case. It just seems to be everybody's just hanging out at the base at the moment and seeing what they can do. And, Winston not going to go in there, just there's a little bit of intimidation. Fake Thief not looking to cause any trouble at the moment, but they're not trying to go for this point yet. They, it's, team, it's just both a team fights a Bruin, but a Cold War right now. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They're just kind of uh, poking, trying to find the positioning that they want as the Widowmakers are looking for picks, but Yoshio gets a uh, Valkyrie and is going to go ahead and pop it as they in, uh, move on to this point here. Interesting call. Bacon Thief does manage to get a so, so that's fine. Kriya does go down to John 9, though, and Cat. They're keeping it still humble. Bacon Thief does get Vinny, though. He's looking pretty strong, but back and forth. But, I mean, nobody's really touching this point. The Dragon Strike does come into play, but it's not going to find anybody. It does sort of separate the team a bit, but it doesn't find any results. The bond does come into play, but... Bye, Bob. Right, right off the Bye, yeah. Okay, well, fair enough. All right, so that happened. Uh, so, uh... 
they still they still in the in long story short throw your bob off the river and you'll scare your team to going back away yeah, it appears that way, <laughs> doesn't it? But, uh, we did see Team Cat do a really good job of kind of stalling that fight so that a so could make it back. Only 50% ticked up, so a single tick Team Clash got on this first point. Finny Faps has swapped onto the Tracer to get back into this fight quicker, and we saw uh, some really good Tracer play from Reagans earlier. We'll see if Finny Faps is his equal. <laughs> See if Pinny Pops is in their equal D. There's Dragon Strike coming in right now. Let's see if they can find results. Worse is going to go down right now. John, nicely done on the target prioritization just to try to find anybody that's at one. Looking pretty strong here. The Discord Orb coming in from good old Zen here from Names. Just going to allow the team to, I guess, hold on to this point. But, I mean, they're missing a couple of members right now. Yeah, uh, I mean, they lost Finny Pops there as well. Trying to stall it out again is the remainder of Team Cat. Uh, we will see Fierce start to take some time on this point as uh, ba Bacon Thief taking control of the Mega Room. The Mega Room right now and the Primal Rage coming out. Uh, gonna be able to knock out John 9 at the very least. They're gonna be able to get the second point. Third point's coming into play, but they do have to just go through a so real quick. But one by one, they will go down like a stack of dominoes and yeah Korea just saying no no this is our point now and now you have to fight five minutes with us in point b yeah it's really interesting both Korea and worse once they start hitting those shots they can take out an entire team but now trying to snowball this is gonna be team clash here we'll see how team clash does uh just be able to try to take this uh color coordination is a little bit thing off for me anyway so here we go it's gonna be a self-destruct sequence nice little bit of zoning first tick going in for team clash as they're going back and forth, we're able to take out John 9, follow up by themselves. Nice to with the Discord are looking great. Drops the Dragon Strike, see if they can find results. Does back off that team a little bit more, and they could actually get the third point right now if they so desire. They're backing them off. A good recoil, just knockback one by one. This is actually really strong from the Transcendence coming in right now. John 9 trying to contest this with the Diva, but can only do it for so long. Gets the mech. They're not going to stagger kill this one because they know they are just going to get that third point right now. Yeah, and that's just a good snowball from them using the uh, Diva Bomb and the uh, uh, Dragon Strike to zone everybody off of that point so that they can get that capture percentage starting to tick up and then they were able to just continue to keep everybody back, get the kills that they needed. So uh, once once they got rolling their Team Clash doing a really good job for uh, on that attack and it looks like we are going to get a pause at uh, the request of one of the players, so... We'll, uh, we'll Good. just take I need to process a this. quick second here. It actually looks like we're going to go ahead and oh, unpause. We just literally so took no a time second. for processing. You said it yourself, uh, sons. <laughs> uh, okay, I take it back. It looks like they're going to go ahead and pause after we can start selecting heroes here. But uh, really, really, really good stuff on that first, first round. Yeah, really good stuff. So, I mean, suds. Uh what what happened here like th there was such a okay i want to understand the cold war thing like why was that happening why did nobody engage the fight right away was there really just th the initial point was to try push was it literally just like both wanted to build alts not be too aggressive and then fight with alts like is that really what they're relying on so it's partially the ultimates it's also partially with these compositions Basically, you've got your uh, long-range DPS just looking for picks. You want that pick in order... That's your go button to start engaging into these fights. And so your Winston is just kind of trying to make a little bit of space, zone the other team out, and just allow those DPS to find uh, some purchase somewhere. That's fair. Okay. Um, that's that's an interesting, interesting approach to it. It seems like we are going to unpause now. So uh, we're going to see what these heroes are going to be decided upon are. I'm very excited to see if we're going to see any shakeups or are we going to go to Ghosts? Because it seems like both teams are just like, ah, we'll do whatever we want. Hey, let's go Ghosts. Uh, I, I see a so on the Sombra, and it seems like they just use that to gather information, and then they just go on the Wrecking Ball for Team Cat. So that might be something we're seeing. But John 9. Uh, he's sitting, sitting on that Sombra there. Uh, it, that may still be a tease as they're sitting in the attacker spawn, but mm. we know for sure now the defense is going to run this double sniper bacon thief there on the Winston. So it's possible that we have another Cold War here in Russia. 
Yes, uh, how, how, how culturally appropriate, I guess, I don't know, uh, fair enough, just study some history, kids, you'll learn about it. Anyway, so here we go, right now, not diving into any kind of history of that venue, we're gonna see the history of Overwatch come into play with the history of a good old Widowmaker having that advantage with the high ground, Korea looking very strong, you're just hanging out in the back with some good old friends. Fray you and just says, you know what? It's I'm just gonna see what's happened here. Very interesting place where they are. They're right under the mech, which is kind of interesting. We'll see if the Ash is able to do anything about it. Rhea, just trying to gather some information. Maybe throw a TNT or two just to do some burn damage before they charge right in here. Uh, not gonna find any results with the burn damage, and we see a so pushing on through with that junk rat. Uh, junk rat, excuse me, wrecking ball. As they're gonna go through, and they just managed to. I'm fierce. What? Uh, did they get knocked back by the wrecking ball, or? I'm not entirely sure there, but the picks coming in for oh. Team Cats as the trades now are starting to turn the other way. Yeah, they are starting to turn the other way, but I mean, Bacon Thief is still here, still doing pretty okay on health, getting healed back up, doing what they can with their Zen. But Freyu does go down, and I mean, Team Flash still holding on to it as best they can. But I mean, all there is left is Fierce, and they are going to go down. They do not. Uh, hold it for much longer, and it looks like Team Cat taking point right away. I'm so confused by that interaction. Yeah, that was, uh, I'm not sure what actually killed, uh, the D.Va there on the side of Team Clash, but whatever it is, lost them that fight, as now they are going to make the swap onto this kind of Winston Zenyatta Goats, and uh, still the triple range DPS coming in from Team Cat as they start to get pushed back at this initial choke. Yeah, they start getting pushed back right now. Hipa just going to go down right away. Almost saw Fierce getting d -Mac. Nicely done to just retreat back, get some health. Good disengage. Uh, but yeah, oh, they are fighting back with a vengeance they're like you take down a mercy we will exact revenge we will not retreat and regroup with them they are just going to push on through see if they can at least get one tick they also got a bob as well transcendence coming out a little bit early but a bob lasts long enough that they don't really have to worry about too much and oh this is just really strong stuff transcendence coming in with the self-destruct sequence going to be able to stop it and they managed to get the kill before they can remix that's pretty huge right there uh looking great and there it's Hipa. Just keeping everybody alive, looking pretty strong here. We see John also just getting <laughs> a nice echolocation arrow kill on the Freyu. Pretty strong stuff, but uh, I mean, they're they're taking out everybody and they're doing good in the team fight, but nobody's on the point. Uh, we'll see if they finally make it on the point. That was so finally makes it on there, but super low in health, able to get that health back though. Keep us staying strong, trying to make sure that they stay alive. Uh, they are trying to, are they just trying to dry push, push with, and then dry push again with also an alt fight within the same push? Because this is absolutely nuts, because they're going down one by one now. Korea finally just giving them a good old mace to the face, and my goodness, uh, Suds, so uh, help. Yeah, I mean, really good aggression here at the end, but... What broke that fight apart was Bacon Thief's Primal Rage. He was able to knock all of the ranged DPS out of the whole second point area, knock them back towards their spawn, and that forced that's what forced Cat to kind of regroup there. And now they're going to just make the swap onto this Maygoat's composition and see if they can't find a little bit better success there. Uh, they are just going to have this transcendence as they push into a Graviton surge here shortly do here there's the ice wall coming in grab comes in pretty strong they're able to just follow up on it name unfortunately dropping transcendence i mean it does help you heal quick but it doesn't let you heal against uh just a barrage of fire yoshio what okay um well i mean they were making their way down there anyways may as well make it look cool right yeah what an incredible boop though that gives you all of ultimate charge that you would get for doing the damage left on him yeah. so you know that's not how team cat wanted to go out but uh now they are pushing into two tank ultimates with nothing to speak of on their side and already their time bank is smaller than what team clash had here yeah team cat has a little bit of difficulty but i mean they've been come back from worse or scraps and we're gonna see how they do at the moment though but it is looking very much in favor right now Especially with that double boop. Like you said, this all charging is pretty good. Bacon Thief over here extends a little bit, but they do have spawn advantage right now, Suds. 
Yeah, and uh, only one ultimate used during that fight in order when it was just the Diva Bomb of Fierce. So that's really good ultimate management from them. But Finny Faps is going to have the Graviton. They've got the Blizzard to combo with it from John 9. So a good chance to uh, get their cap here in this fight. Yeah, very good chance indeed, but they did use a lot of ults when they were fighting the team fight, and they didn't touch their points, so this is a little bit interesting. There is going to be a blizzard. There's a sound barrier coming in right after that, but it's looking like the blizzard could be just what they needed. It helps them out. It allows them to get more benefits with the rally. They go into the fight with the armor, but the sound barrier does come out from Team Clash. They are able to just push on through, take down Finny. Transcend is coming out, though, from name, but... Rhea still goes down worse, just being able to overwhelm them. And you charge in a huge Earth Shatter with an Ice Wall to be follow up. You don't want to be in that situation, but I guess worse does. As they say, you know what, Team Cat, you want to wall us in? We're going to take you down. And uh, John 9, oh, uh, or excuse me, not John 9, but worse, my goodness, very strong Saria. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know about that Earth Shatter from a so They really that in this next fight, uh, two minutes left on the clock. 14 cat they are again at an ultimate disadvantage having pretty much nothing as they go into another primal rage from bacon thief who has been so good with that ultimate so far on this map yeah it's 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 kind of been very interesting to create able to take out a heap of right now and uh i mean like yeah all the execution but i wasn't entirely against the earth shatter but the lack of follow-up there was just kind of made it difficult and we're able to pop off with along with their supports made it look strong Freyu you right now speaking of supports popping off taking out finny and look at this alt economy right now look how dramatically different this is this is absolutely insane to me such you have made an excellent point yeah, I mean, they are just Clash using very few ultimates to hold this. Bacon Thief didn't even pop the Primal Rage in that fight. And now they are going to have a Blizzard. Reagan should get this uh, this rally up here short, but they don't have a lot of time to wait on this Graviton Surge. Yeah, and they got to hope that this Blizzard's is going to be huge. They get grabbed here, and there's the self Destruct sequence. Could be pretty big. Oh, it does get Finny as So goes down, and that's one by one. 60 seconds remaining. And only two also to name. Uh, studs, they could go aggressive and act just close this out right now, but what do you think? I mean, Bacon Thief does have that Primal Rage, so they've got a great opportunity to just keep people off of this point with only 35 seconds left. And uh, But Finny Faps and John have that Graviton uh, Blizzard combo. They just need to find a little bit better Graviton here and definitely can't let it be eaten by Fierce. Well, rally to them. They speed in right now, trying to touch this point. They do chance to take out Korea. This is looking good for Team Cat. They're staying together as a group. They're falling back, disengaging. I mean, Bacon Thief taking so much damage, but they dropped the Primal Rage. There's a Blizzard there, though. Ooh, this is looking pretty good. The Transcendence comes into play. This will allow them to get out of that situation, but Fierce gets taken out. Are they going to be able to get this progress down? The Earth Shatter coming into play. Going to get blocked. Doesn't seem to find any way much in results. But, I mean, they're still finding results. Whether they had the Earth Shatter or not, they're able to take out quite a good amount of people to get the first tick. But they need to touch this point. They need to run back. They are kind of interesting. They're staying together as a group. They're target prioritizing. But, I mean, they're kind of at this point. They're in OT. They need to touch this point, And they need to make sure that they don't leave it. Otherwise, they will just lose this map right away. We see Korea switch on over to Wrecking Ball, see if they can just stall for time, see if they can be able to do it. But I mean, after this point now, there it is. That is going to be them taking the point, and uh, we're going to see either a win or a draw. Yeah, absolutely. They do finally get that cap there off of a lot of ultimates thrown into that fight, but they did start to find some kills with them, which is, you know, the very important part of using those ultimates. But now we are going to need to. Uh, see the attack come out from Team Clash, who have four minutes to get a single tick onto this first point. So that's a really tough defense to uh, come out from Team Cat, and the most difficult part of that is you can't step off the point for more than a couple of seconds because it yeah. ticks up so quickly. It does, absolutely. All right, so we'll see how Team Cat tries to hold this and make this a draw to still make this one for one. Uh, we're looking at this right now. They're not going any crazy. They are you when they are on goat in any shape or form. You know that Team Cat 
They're putting their game faces on. Yeah, and the desk mentioned it, but John Nine, not an experienced off tank player. So this is, I believe, the first time we've seen them put him onto an off tank playing the Diva here so that they can run this uh, Zenyatta Winston Goats composition. Coming out from the attack is the double sniper. I think they're expecting uh, for DPS from Team Cat, but they aren't gonna get it. So we'll see if they decide to make some swaps of their own here. We'll see how it goes indeed. I think they're just gonna go for it, but they do have four minutes to work with. They have a lot of time to work with. Nope, they turn uh, right around oh, okay. back well, into yeah. spawn. Uh, let's see, they, it looks like they do want to go a goat's composition of their own. They're May gonna goats. go the May goats with Bacon Thief on that Reinhardt. So uh, they're gonna look to just rush down the uh, members of Team Cat here and get that damage on them. See what they can do right now. They're rushing it, and all right, nicely done. They're able to take out Freyu, and oh, but they do get the D back onto John Nine. It's okay. They take out a so though. That is a little bit risky, and uh, going this aggressive route has not rewarded them. Heepa all list all by themselves. They managed to make it back, but John Nine, as unfortunately a team next diva, is not going to have the easiest of times. And that's got to be it. Name the last one remaining, and that's the ice wall being blocked off from the point. Ever so closely to it, not gonna be taken. Clash, do take this in a very confident fashion. Yeah, what an ice wall, but I mean, they ended up just getting a pick or two there at the start of that fight, and because of that spot advantage, they just are not gonna have any kind of issues winning out that first tick there after that. But a big diva bomb from Fierce here as we see them start to. Oh my goodness! The sextuple kill for that play of the game. You love to see it. Uh, but yeah, that is going to be Powerful. Team Clash taking Volskaya, putting them up two to one here in this uh, in this matchup. All right, it's match point. You, uh, you you talk to Team Cat. You go like, all right, let's 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 bang our heads together and see how it goes. All right, so you said John 9 is not comfortable on the off tank. Uh, I mean, honestly, as as a DPS role, the May Goats wouldn't have been a bad idea either. You would have been able to get that zoning, and they've been a very strong May. Like, what made you think... What do you think made them go behind their head to say, "Hey, John, could you could you run Diva?" You know, I'm not sure. It felt like they were second guessing themselves a little bit there, because um, I agree. I think the Magos would have been a totally reasonable choice on that point uh if you're able to build up the blizzard that can buy you so much and the uh just right clicks coming out from may give you the opportunity for uh really quick kills onto some of those even the beefier targets if you're hitting those headshots so i i don't know i that's the decision they made and whether or not it was the right one i guess we will know because uh they do end up losing that map yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate, but uh, let's let's be half glass full. What do you what do you want to see? Um, for I'm gonna focus a little bit on Team Cat because uh, Clash is at match point right now, and uh, Team Cat needs to build it back up. What do you see that Team Cat is doing very well that you want to see them act upon more of to uh, sort of secure this next win? So I think they're really excelling when they use PS and are able to fights down into calling it because when they do that they're typically finding those first picks and uh actually winning out those fights more often than not and so does a pretty good job of just finding the zoning on the winston preventing the enemy dps from uh getting those easy sight lines those easy kills so i think if they can continue to find maps and geometry that allow them to play that kind of game they're going to uh find a lot more success here well, it looks like the map is as good as the world, and uh, that's a pretty DPS-friendly map in my eyes, just because of just the way that there's so much high ground advantage and ways to be able to flank as well with the, also that massive tracer that they have just sort of back here with uh, their good old friend uh, Rhea. So we'll see how th that works for them. How do you feel about Blizzard World for the side of Team Cat? Um, I think that's a good map for them. We've seen Devil Sniper comps be very effective on there throughout the life of the map. So especially that second point has so much high ground, such long sight lines that they can just be so effective there, especially the Widowmaker. And first point isn't bad for them either. So as long as they can find the hold there in those first couple of points, I think they're in kind of their element on this map. So uh, they have a really good chance of holding here.
Yeah, it's a uniquely shaped map for a uniquely um, sort of cacophony of heroes put together on the side of Team Cat. So I think this is going to be very much up their alley. And uh, Team Clash, they are at match point. And uh, I get, let's focus on them a little bit more. They've been doing very, very well. They haven't really go strayed too far from the GOATs, uh, except when they see them going the triple DPS route. And why do you think it's that? Do you think they just go like, all right, they're going... It looks like comfort picks. Should we go for comfort picks? Are they reading into that that much, or are they or are they just going like, let's try to capture the heroes exactly? Because there really is, uh, there is some synergy, but there's also not a lot of synergy. Yeah, I don't know if it is comfort picks on the side of Team Clash so much as um, when you have all those DPS going up against goats, you can start to surround them, and that makes it very difficult for that goats comp to function because you really only have shielding in one direction with that Reinhardt. So once they make that decision, it's kind of difficult to run goats into it. And I think they realize that and decide that they need to uh, swap it up, find something that is more effective against that ranged composition. Yeah, that's fair enough. You know, hey, if you got a counter here, you got a counter here. And that's, you know, some, sometimes it'd be like that in comp as well. Uh, but man, either way, all right. Aside from comp, we're in a competition. It is called Overwatch Open Division, a very high quality competition at that. And uh, here we are at Blizzard World, a wonderful, uh, vast view. And uh, so normally I would ask, what kind of defense do you want to see? Uh, but I'm going to be even more specific and just ask, what kind of defense do you want to see from uh, coming in from Team Cat? Or actually, Team Cat's not uh, going on defense. That's going to be Clash. So Team Cat's going on attack. So. Uh, how do you, you feel know, about this? Do you think uh, their normal, like, triple DPS is going to work with the Wrecking Ball, or...? Um, I mean, so we've got, yeah, Team Clash over here in the be defending first, and it looks like what they want to run is this kind of... It's a May Ash composition with Reinhardt, Zarya, Lucio, and, uh, and Ana. So that's an interesting choice, I think. Definitely some synergies there with Ash and Ana, as well as the the Zarya and the May synergies that we've already talked about. So I, I like what they're showing us here. And on the attack, it looks like they are going to do some scouting with the So on the Sombra. John 9 sitting on this Farah, which I actually like a lot. They're going to yeah. try to run this Pharmacy and just get that damage onto the back line of Team Clash. The Pharmacy is pretty strong. So just getting that information, switching on back to Wrecking Ball. Just going to push on through and see what they can do right here. Uh, this is match point, but uh, hey, what better times to just go ahead and just go right in there. The dynamite is going to come into play, uh, so just kind of give them a little bit of the scare, a little bit of a distraction as well. See if they can just have that pressure off the of Pharah, so that way they can just go ahead and focus on everything. But I mean, Korea is just hanging out in the back lines, just be able to push on through and uh, get as much as they can. Finney is able to find Korea though, nicely done, and that allows John 9 to go crazy like they are right now. Just hanging out on the ground right now. Just hopping back and forth, going and see what they can do. Finney's doing fine here. Nice price walk. I mean, Wars is trying to just zone all by themselves, but this, it's pretty fun in a very quick amount of time. Team Cat is already starting off to a great way. Absolutely, a so doing a great job of just being disruptive, knocking everybody around so that Finny Faps can open up those sidelines and find those picks. He really, he got the first three kills in that fight and really just opened that fight up for Team Cat. And now they're going to be able to start to take some positioning here as we get swaps coming in from Team, Cl from Team Clash. They are going to get fierce over onto this D.Va, worse onto the Zarya, so that they can do a little bit more against John 9's Farah, as he's got this barrage ready to go. Got the barrage ready to go, and I like the fact that they're holding on to it. They, they haven't dropped it right away, which is very admirable. They are trying to take this fight to spawn because they are staggering the kills quite a bit. But uh, this is, uh, they have great opportunities to just push this through. Do you want to see the landmines drop that chokehold? Um, I mean, I don't know how I felt about it, a lot of uh, So's landmines, but it's going to drop is they, probably a better choice here. Yeah, it seems like it does allow them to push on through. Good zoning, and looks like uh, 
Yoshio learned their lesson not to walk through the landmines right away. Interesting, nice shield match, but unfortunately the ground pound coming in from a so is going to stop them dead in their tracks, but nice onto them. They sleep Bob. That buys a little more time. A so's all by themselves. The barrage comes into play. Does find his fine worse. It looks like they're able to find Yoshio as well, thanks to the power of a boosted. Boosted Clara in the pharmacy. Just still a strong composition since day one it was invented. Names able to take out Baked Deep and I mean, they are going to be able to push this payload just a little bit farther with at least a transcendence in their back pocket. Yeah, they did use a lot of ults. Finifap's going to have that Dragon Strike as well, though. And uh, Kriya, the only ult on the side of Team Clash with that rally. Fierce should build up the Diva Bomb. Bacon Thief getting close, but Bacon Thief taking a lot of damage here early on. Yeah, Bacon Thief taking quite a bit of damage, but I mean... It's defense still. It is getting close to their spawn, so they do have the advantage now. And uh, Bacon seems to go a little bit more aggressive once they know that there's that spawn advantage. But uh, Dragon Strike comes in. No zoning, really. They all were in the back area, so they are not really too worried about it. Just And they're kind of trying to make sure to maintain the high ground. John 9, unfortunately, just sort of, I guess, blasting himself. I don't really know exactly what happened. self destruct sequence comes in. They take out Rhea. Looking pretty strong here. Name just trying to stay alive as long as he can. But, I mean, you can't really out, outrun a Winston as a Zenyatta. That just tends to be sort of a... A tortoise beats the hair race is not to be the case. Yeah, and we see Hepa does get a kill there with the melee on the Mercy. But uh, that uh, death from John 9 was actually Bacon Thief popping the shield up there right next to him. So really good job to kind of uh, force him to shoot himself onto that shield and get the kill that way. So now we are going to see Team Cat try to take this high ground, but they get grabbed early. Yeah, grabbed early and uh, taking advantage as well. Looking pretty strong. I mean, not much to report here as a play-by-play -play caster. Dropping uh, the nano boost, uh, interestingly enough, I guess just to send that message that, yeah, hey, we are pretty strong and we could use that for the team fight. Yeah, um, the old management, not quite the same here from Team Clash. They've been needing a lot more on this payload map, but... Uh, Yoshio is going to have the sound barrier in the next fight, and we are going to see pretty much the same pathing come out from Team Cat as they want this high ground. Yeah, they do want this high ground. By our grenade is able to find Rhea, but I mean, they're falling back, staying close to their team, looking pretty strong. So is able to find Bacon Thief, and that's going to be good. So no bubbles to protect any supports. Ice Wall comes in, they zone out whatever they can. They're just choosing one of gang up. And I mean, a Team Cat has really strong target prioritization just absolutely great stuff and i just like can't believe it they're just going here look at finney that is uh just absolutely amazing just they're gonna go ahead and push on through get this point and uh there you go yeah and now they're making a lot of space here on third as well as John with his tanks and then reagan's coming from right using this king bro oh in. my gosh Huge Earth Shatter comes into play. This is a ton for keep, but oh, there we go. Sound Barrier comes in. They are just going to rush on through, taking them out one by one. Kiba does go down, but the Rally comes back. He's just going to fight this, but the so goes down. I mean, at this point, you dropped a lot of ults to fall back. Uh, Ice Wall comes in. Just say, please go away. Uh, and now they are, uh, they're kind of at this awkward situation because, like, if you can hold Choke at that close of work, uh, I guess they're letting them have that a little bit. Uh, you can do some strong things here, but right now Suds is like just going through the back and forth motions of di disengaging and re-engaging with a grab. Coming in, see if they can follow it. Seltzer Shug's defense is pretty big. Yeah, we'll be able to oh. find both tanks. Yeah, nicely done, but the blizzard comes into play. We could take advantage of it. We take out Yoshio. Are they gonna be able to find anybody else? Blizzard not lasting long enough to find results here. The Seltzer Shark sequence and grabs just very strong right now, and they are still holding them back at spawn right now, Suds. Yeah, when uh, we see Team Clash start to get an advantage in the fight, they push that advantage so hard, just chasing them to spawn, getting as many stagger kills as they possibly can. And Bacon Thief gonna have this uh, Primal Rage again, which he's just been so effective with in this series as he goes ahead and jumps into the back line. Jumps in the back line indeed, and Bacon Thief does go down once again. Just a uh, very aggressive stuff, but I mean, they were just pushing on through anyways, and now nicely done, Rhea. Just doing strong stuff. They haven't dropped a rally yet. Uh, they are very much trying to hold on to these ults as best they can and just have some nice cycle. I mean, they're doing really good. They're winning this team fight very, very quickly. But uh, as far as like getting to 
the point on within the time bank, this is looking not to be the case. Yeah, I mean, only 45 seconds left here, Team Cat, and they still have a good amount of pushing to do on this card. We are going to see at least one more defense come out from Team Clash, who have the Graviton Surge, but a Ooh. big shatter coming out. Big Shatter just managed to get the demon and help with Nate as well comes to the play. They might be able to do this. Use grab as well. I mean, the ult economy is in favor. Oh, but that's a use grab with a bunch of follow-up as well. But there's the Blizzard coming into play. Got some quite a few freezes. They're going to just take the advantage of this. And they're actually going to go down one by one. Ten seconds remaining. Are they going to be able to do it? I mean, Freyu on that transcends, not wasting a moment too soon to try to contest this as best they can. Trying to get this ice block. Ooh, it is going to go into OT. Oh, and Fierce goes down before they can remake. That's going to be huge for them to at least complete this point. Now they just want to be able to do that so that they can go the full 15 yards. Bastion just coming into play. Kriya just trying to do something creative at the moment. And, uh, I mean, there they go. They are just going to be able to finally get that third point. A very valiant effort trying to do something with that Bastion. But, hey, Suds. They do manage to finally make it. They absolutely do. And that, la again, as we've talked about, Team Cat able to just clutch out these important fights when they need to. And they continue to do it even at an old, a little bit of an old disadvantage there. So really great fight from them. We saw a lot of good stuff that Blizzard was so well used, allowed them to really start to get that kill, those kills and force the respawns to start trickling out from Team Clash, but now we are going to see Team Cat move onto this defense, so I wouldn't be surprised if we continue to see these uh, multi-DPS compositions. Multi-DPS indeed, and uh, you know, it's pretty effective, but I, I wouldn't be surprised either if they just went ahead and switched onto the Ghost right away. We're going to see how Team Cat defends this, and already right off the bat, looking like some May Goats is happening right now, but... I mean, Team Clash, looking like they're they're going to try to do something creative when they can, but, you know, it's still at attack spawn. Yeah, absolutely, and, uh, yeah, as you say, May Goats coming out on the defense, so, uh, I, I think, as you said, I think this is going to be the right call for them, a little bit better choice than running uh, the traditional Goats if uh, some of their players are not super comfortable on their assigned heroes in that composition. And May, a strong pick in this Goats composition in a lot of situations. So attackers, we are going to see Bacon Thief come out on the Sombra and uh, look for a little bit of scouting here, see what is being run by the defenders. There's the translocate out, and he's going to swap onto the Rhino as, as we get the uh, May Goats from both sides, as Kriya does swap off as well. Fair enough. I mean, it's a very strong composition as well. So, I mean, they are just going to go ahead and not do anything crazy or fancy. They're just going to have unique ice walling zoning skills just come to play. But, I mean, Vinny, uh, beyond the shield, just going to get rammed down, but Name is able to take out Bacon Thieves. So, that, I mean, there's a fair trade. The main tank is going to go, but a so goes down as well, as along with worse, and this is looking pretty strong for them right now. Uh, I mean, Clash, looking like they are just going to wipe them out. My goodness. Just the fact that they pressured that shield so much for the Reinhardt and be able to take them out right away is huge stuff, especially with that Zarya going down early. Yeah, Finny Paps going down early was such an unfortunate turn of events. Team Cat that put them at a huge disadvantage, and now oh. they're gonna we're gonna see Clash move into second point with five and a half minutes on the clock. Five and a half minutes indeed. They just pull up the ice wall just to see if they can protect them. So does able to take down Korea. Looking pretty strong right now for them, but they oh my goodness, there they go. Team Cat is able to stop them dead in their tracks and push them back to spawn and uh, punish them for a little bit of aggression. And uh, now. Alt economy looking very strong for them. Now I'm just really curious how they're going to execute it. Yeah, both teams actually sitting on quite a few ultimates. Finny Faps pretty far behind Fierce though, just because he went down early in that last fight. Uh, same for a so, but otherwise looking pretty even here as we're going to see an interesting rotation come in from Team Clash as they go all the way around the back, leaving Cat to sit on the payload right where it came out. Let's see how it works out. I mean, the Earth Shatter and then the grab coming into play, but there's a Blizzard coming in from both sides. See if they're able to follow up, though. Oh, but I mean, Wurz is able to find John 9, but the, oh my gosh, the Earth Shatter is going to be huge. 
and then get Finny right away, just catching them off by the stands and see what they can do here. Freyu just popping off once again as that Zenyatta just getting really aggressive. The Discord Orb's coming into play, and yep, Clash, they are on their road trip once more. Yeah, Team Clash has done a really good job of using some interesting pathing to force Team Cat into positions they aren't comfortable with. You always want to have somewhere that you, you can back up to that is towards your spawn and behind cover, and they just did not allow them that in that fight. So now uh, they did have to use quite a few ultimates, but uh, Fierce already at 75% to another grab as they are pushing into uh, four ultimates, and the Graviton going to come out early here. Huge grab upon on top of that with also just the blizzard as well could be huge for the ice wall coming into play and the sound barrier is going to help. Well, Earth Shatter comes into play though. Nicely done from a so able to try to just follow up as much as they can. Yeah, they're just going to go down one by one. Nicely done. Team just goes like, yep, all right, Earth Shatter, everybody down. Let's rush in. Athena says team kill. And you got a nice cycle of ults going on here at Team Cat. Oh, yeah. And Worst did a really good job to use her wall to raise Bacon Thief up to save him from a So's charge, but it wasn't a and now these teams are just trading fights back and forth. One will dominate one, the other team dominates the other, and these uh, have just been a really close match, but not close fight, which is kind of interesting to watch here. Interesting way of phrasing, I would agree with you 100%. Blizzard coming in right after the grab, see if they can follow up. The Ice Wall gonna come in and just basically bully everybody. So just kind of going down stream that they can help get their team out of the way and i mean this is the most about team kills i've ever seen in a fight yeah and now finny faps and john nine gonna have their have blizzard combo and i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> yeah, take this next fight so it's just a matter of how much time they're able to burn off before this payload is pushed into the next point <laughs> yeah absolutely um we'll see how it goes with the blizzard uh, grab combo, Finny has it ready. They're probably gonna shot call it now. There it is, and there it is right now. The transition comes in, keep it alive. Worse is just out of the way, but their eyes box does not help it out. Megan Thief does go down. We prioritize it. Kriya does go down, nicely done. There's Fierce in the pack of Piranhas. They go down one more time, and uh, we'll see how this goes. I mean, at the moment, because Worse was kind of away from the team fight, the back and forth is kind of stopping now. Look at the, the percentage difference between Worse and Fierce right now. Yeah, Aso gonna have this Earth Shatter may give the advantage in this next to Team Cat as they start to take this high ground just so that they can deny it to the attackers here. Do what they can right now. The rally comes into play. They are gonna see if they can use this armor just helpful and just like Reinhardt's getting shot out of the sky with the ice walls just nicely done. Trying to zone them one by one. But oh my gosh, a little bit of back capping having them play. They almost touch the second point would not be the case there. Huge grab, and there's the blizzard again. Um, <laughs> you gonna go in, and they're uh, it's looking like Transcend's gonna help out a little bit. Urshire gonna fight quite a few amount of people, but they managed to get Bacon Thief just in the time. Uh, 60 seconds remaining. Cyber comes in, huge grab. No blizzard though. John is alone right now with 80%, not gonna be able to follow up on it. Transcendence comes in for up for you, and that's gonna be good for them. Oh, able to take out Name as well. That's huge, but right through that ice wall, right before they can get zoned off, they are gonna be able to gang up on them and push them back. 40 seconds. Nice use the ice wall as well to get onto the high ground as well. That's a good. That's a good thing to use. Absolutely. And now 40 or 30 seconds for Team Class to try to push this in, and a huge spawn advantage for Team Cat here, but. Uh, not necessarily the ult advantages. All they're gonna have is Blizzard and the sound barrier to try to hold this one at second point. <laughs> well, they love their Blizzard. There it goes right now. John 9 is gonna be able to drop it. They're gonna be able to find Yoshio and they're gonna be able to push on to this point right now. Oh my gosh, nicely done from John 9. That could have actually just stopped the team fight right there. Yeah, three seconds remaining. They're not gonna touch this. We are two for two right now. And Team Cat has tied this up right now. And what a hold to tie it up. They stopped them on second point of Blizzard World. Such a good job. And what a crazy map that was. Just constant uh, grab Blizzard combos. And honestly, the way these teams are playing it, they look more effective than the grab bombs that are so popular <laughs> throughout the uh, range of Overwatch. And just Bacon I, Thief yeah. swinging away there. It's... it's... <laughs> It's, it's like really masterful. I've never seen this before. Just like, 
it's just how how fascinating it is that like a grav blizzard it makes sense you know the blizzard has such a longevity of alt that it just allows them to follow up right after the grav because if you just like drop it right in the middle of the grav and you're free you're gonna freeze you're not gonna be free and it's just like wow it it's just it's, how bad it's so effective i just never expected yeah in addition to getting rid of all those shields it just gives you so much time to try to clean up that fight and that's what allowed them to get all of those team kills but now we're gonna jump right into map five My going favorite. to nepal and we're yeah. gonna start on shrine which is a really interesting map for compositions but I wouldn't be surprised if we continue to see this Magos <laughs> as it just works so well for both of these teams. Um, yes. Really showing a huge advantage in that composition so far. Yeah, I mean, John 9, I'm so glad they put the build of Magos. John 9 really shining through there. And I'm not laughing at the, at the craziness of this. I'm laughing from the sense of like, wow. And in the end, this would be absolutely just still the craziest of fights and then just go straight to Magos. But I mean, what do you see here at the beginning? What do you expect here? It's a control map. Are they still going to do what they did on Busan or are they going to do something different? Because they did get reverse swept there. Well, we're showing Magos, but I wouldn't be terribly <laughs> surprised if uh, Cat wanted to run some range DPS here. That high ground off to the uh, far side of the point can be really effective for those uh, ranged hit scan players as well as something like a Hanzo. But um, for the moment, it looks like we're going to continue to see this Magoats matchup. See I'm if hyped. we can't get some more uh, Grav Blizzard combos because they certainly clean up the map. They certainly clean up the map and they're really impressive. And just like. You do need that May to be aggressive, though, so that way they can build up the ult charge similarly to the uh, Zarya, so that way they're in keep with each other. We did see that catching them off guard a little bit. Ice speaking of catching off guard. The Ice Wall coming in, just trying to just zone out Bacon, but they are not going to be able to do that. Rhea just going to go down right to them right away. It doesn't matter if they have their whole team or not. They are just going to push on right through because they're right behind that wall, and they're just going to push on through. Nice Ice Wall, able to zone out a couple of supports, even a so as well pretty good right now and they are able to take them out one by one it looks like it's going to be pretty much a team clash map happening right now as bacon thief nicely done not giving into the pressure of the may ice wall and great yeah. stuff team clash taking that first fight without ults pretty handily but finny faps already building that graviton surge bacon thief gonna have the earth shatter here to try to shut them down and it looks like team cat want to engage from this high ground but worse is up there waiting for them on the may big question is is do they drop that grab right now or do they wait for the blizzard use your shatter coming in right now but they do drop it are they gonna be able to fall up Tria goes down but a so goes down the sound barrier doesn't allow them to keep living and thriving and they could be able to hold on to it the sound barrier coming back into play i don't think is as beneficial though just due to the fact that the team it's just still thriving. Yoshio goes down. They're swinging it back around to the point. They're going to try to fight this. Main tank does manage to get back. They are missing a couple of members that are trying to get back right now. But they do manage to make it back in time. They're just missing Yoshio and they'll be okay. Huge grab. There's the rally happening right now. And it's, there's the blizzard. It's the grab blizzard that we've been all talking about. And now all the ravens looking pretty good. They're in freezing. Getting, able to get Finny. Looking pretty strong. 56 seconds remaining. Or 56, 58% on the board. And there we go. Tactical SD. They just said, you know what? Let's reset. Let's not try to make this fight last longer than it needs to be. Yeah, they are just going to hop off there, and uh, if we go back to the very start of that fight, I think part of the reason Finifap's grab wasn't capitalized on is John 9 spent most of the grab just trying to freeze Bacon Thief, and that meant he wasn't getting the damage in <laughs> yep. from those right clicks, and he ended up going down himself because of it, as Worse was freezing him from the high ground. And now, same pathing, we're going to see if they find uh, some purchase with an Earth Shatter from a so if he can just land the Fire Strike here quickly. Suds, God bless you for being able to observe this as an amazing killer caster you are. Blizzard happening right now. We're going to go in and see the zoning. They do also use the ice wall. Nicely done. Just trying to get the team away from each other. There's overtime happening right now, but it's looking like a zero to it real quick as they're just trying to push out. Throw it to Shatter. That does manage to get big at the, but nobody able to follow up on it. They're trying their best to push on through. So it goes down, actually. Maybe they will take out Kriya. Sound barrier from both sides. Huge grab, but not a lot of firepower apart from John 9 and maybe the Zarya, but nobody's able to follow up on it. Oh my gosh, everybody's lived, able to live through everything. 
SG is going to be able to push on through, but Yoshio does go down. Looks like they're going to be able to finally push on through, and that is going to be at the point flipping on over to the side of Team Cat, not making this a 0 to 100 anytime soon. Yeah, they finally get that point, and they are going to have the Blizzard as well as the Transcendence, but Team Clash are in a good position here. They've already got 99%. They can just build up ultimates and win a single fight, and they're going to have the Grav-Blizzard combo for this fight, so a good chance that they go ahead and take it right here if they can land that combo one more time. But uh, we are going to see them take that same high ground pathing, try to find the engagement from the far side of the point. Good thing they don't go baited into the ice wall and they are going to see what they can do right now to be able to find it. Grab comes in there. It's a blizzard from both sides. They're going to do it. The ice wall happens right now. We're going to see the transcendence come in. Fail save as a plan B just in case things aren't working out. A nice bin from Aso though, but they do go down to Yoshio right away. Oh, huge shatter. Absolutely amazing. Bacon Thief coming in to save the day and that's going to be it. That has to be the team fight right there, Suds. Absolutely, that's going to be the team fight and likely the first point win for Team Clash here. Uh, really good job by them to defend for so long. And unfortunately, Team Cat just weren't able to line up their ultimate combos uh, for the majority of that point. And because of that, they ended up losing it uh, 99 to not a lot, to be honest. So uh, we are going to go to Village. One point capture now is all, not, not capture, but one point win here is all the Team Clash needs to take this uh, match. And they're going to look to do it here on Village. But I think if Team Cat want to play to their strengths, playing that uh, a couple a DPS composition, running the Fair and the Hanzo from opposite sides of this point has been super effective both yeah. in the World Cup and here in Open Division lately. John 9 Pharmacy could be very strong. I just saw it earlier with casting Miori on one of the South Africa BS games. So we'll see if this is able to come into play at the moment, though. Uh, just seeing if they are able to do that, but not to be the case because they are still running the Magos. I think they're not going to be trying to do it anytime soon, pushing on through. Icewell comes in, and I mean, this allows them to just, I guess, unlock the point, get ready to see if they're going to charge in. Target prioritize, build up a little bit, but a so goes down right away. Icewell going to be able to block them off. It's just going back and forth. This ice wall just makes it for such interesting zoning. Fierce able to get taken down and bullied out by the rest of the team on Team Cat. But there is the ice wall, and they use it to cap it. Now that they're just going to see if they can win the team fight, or at least just build it up to a decent percentage that they have a relatively good percentage lead. Grab comes into play. Sound barrier comes into play right now. They're doing what they can. Earth Shattering is going to get blocked nicely down. There's the transcendence. Here's the big question though, Suds, is it going to be the Blizzard anytime soon? Kriya loses there. Rally, they can't drop it right now, and there it is. Worst dropping that Blizzard, and seems to be the win condition for either team. The first one to get their Blizzard is really the one that holds onto it. Right now, Team Clash is looking like they're on top. Yeah, and I don't love the way Team Cat decided to play that. They took the point early and kind of zoned off Team Clash, but then by the point hadn't unlocked, so they were unable to make any capture progress on it. By the time it unlocked, Team Clash uh, was able to push in while Team Cat's cooldowns were just pretty much uh, cooling down and they were able to start to win that fight and ended up getting the Blizzard up first, as you said, but now pushing in with the Blizzard is Team Cat and they're gonna go ahead and throw it out early here. Yeah, throwing it out early, just kind of pushing everybody out just to just basically turn this point around and cap it. They're very close to doing it. Take out Korea, seeing what they can find right now. Urshire comes in, it's pretty big. They are able to take it out as so does go down, and this is looking great. Worse, oh man, Team Cat, they are looking right now. Very, very difficult situation for them, and uh, they come close to getting it. Uh, and this looks pretty dire, and Name's just going to go ahead and retreat. Yeah, this is not looking good here for Team Cat. Fierce has the Graviton Surge for you with the Transcendence and uh, only the Earth Shattering to engage with here for Team Cat. E and even if they take it, they're going to have to hold this point for so long, but they are in last fight territory here now and they need oh, to win no. this one. Quick. Yeah, but I mean, this ice wall is going to be used. They drop Transcendence right now, but a so goes down, and there's no chance of a res because no Mercy on board. And they're doing a Blizzard right now, and that is pretty much used. And what we've learned from both of these sides is that once the Blizzard is dropped, 
that is where it stops and it's just going to be pretty much them going to wake down and that's going to be the 2-0 victory and team clash is going to take the series three to two an extremely close game suds yeah and such just an unfortunate misplay coming in from team cat on that final engage you know the may is there you have to move through that choke as a team or at least bait out that wall if you want to have any chance of getting a fight there and unfortunately they didn't a so went down he had their fight winning ultimate and uh it just wasn't available to be used so Unfortunately for Team Cat, they are going to lose there, but a really close match overall today, 3-2 in favor of Team Clash. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the May Goats as well, I think Team Cat and Team Clash may have found something that they could work very well with. But uh, let's go ahead and just break down all these notes with a, a certain analyst group that I'm certainly la fond of, uh, as we're going to hand it over to Spaceman and the analysts. Uh, thank you, Debbie. Great, great throw as <laughs> Always, I gotta, gotta love those. Um, okay, so Clash take it. <laughs> Clash, Clash take this 3-2. So, Lafon, you were correct at the start. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to start with you here. We were talking whilst watching that about <laughs> ultimate economy, use of ults, uh, and, and ult combinations, specifically with May as well. Uh, do you want to just break some of that down for the viewers? I'm still shaking my head at the, uh, the transition there. <laughs> just want to... <laughs> Just want to put a moment on that one. Take a quick pause. <laughs> Think about it. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> um, the, the ultra rotation combination. Yeah, this is something we highlighted a, a little bit when we were watching the game back. We didn't get a, a lot of time to delve into it at the halftime, but it does come into play a lot through this latter half of the uh, of the set. Um, one of the combinations that they were running was that May Goats combination, and one thing that May excels at, of course, is area control. She has that uh, slow into a stun... Uh, sort of stunned she freezes the uh the opponent so they can't move and then you're able to take control of that uh one of the things that really means is that t tanks have to watch their positioning immensely because if you are out of position you're gonna get charged you're gonna get shield bashed you're gonna get discorded and then you're gonna get blown up there's a lot at play here and with the changes of course to may where she's able to freeze multiple targets which happened a little while ago actually where she's able to freeze those multiple targets she becomes a little bit more viable against many tanks so that is one of the reasons why you see her in play. She really does work against GOATs in the sense that she's able to control the group. What that means, though, is that tanks have to play the rotations cleanly. And both these teams, they seemed less keen on making the tanks stay alive as opposed to just trying to build their, uh, their killing blow faster. And sometimes what that means is that you just end up having a stalemate, which through Blizzard World and, of course, through initial parts of Nepal, that was what came to be. I think at the end of the day, though, you saw from Clash a... Uh, a more rigorous structure in the last map, which ended up with the uh, being the reason why they took the victory. And Nari, any anything to add uh, on that with, with regards to the ultimates or anything throughout the three maps we just witnessed there? Well, uh, a big point as well for ultimates that we did notice was the over usage of ultimates, right? Um, over investment, that's the word. So you go into a fight, you're two down. The fight's lost. I mean, you've lost like your Reinhardt and your Brigida, right? Your your goat's composition is, is effectively dead. You need to regroup. And then we get a, a sound barrier or a transcendence or literally any ultimate. And I'm thinking, why? You've lost the fight. You have three ultimates in your bank. Now you've wasted one and possibly two because we saw that as well uh, when we saw stacking support ultimates for no reason. Now you have to regroup. The enemy team still have four or five ultimates. You've down to one because you've wasted two. So your next push is effectively useless. You really got to be thinking about how you're going to be utilizing, especially some of the more important ones. The May ultimate is huge. The Graviton is huge. The Transcendence is huge. These are ults that you cannot afford to be wasting. <laughs> the funniest thing that I did see in terms of just ultimates was... Um, Reinhardt went in for an Earth Shatter, and May put up a wall and just completely blocked her own Reinhardt's Earth Shatter. Guys, you gotta be communicating that kind of thing. That that's an ultimate wasted, just in lieu of one cooldown of your own May. Your ults are way too important, even in this goat composition where ultimates can be built up relatively quickly. They're still super important, especially if you want to be winning these game-changing fights. The fights in between are important. 
but the most important fights are the ones at the end the the 99 to 99 fights the the overtime pushes those are the fights you need to be winning and if you've blown all of your ultimates in previous fights and you go into those fights dry you've effectively lost unless i don't know Korea pops off and kills everybody again on that on that widow maker but yeah definitely need to be looking at that indeed and as much as we'd love to break down even more of the game we've just witnessed we do actually have our next game coming up in, uh, I think, just over about 10 minutes time. So uh, we're going to take a, a short break here. And I just want to say thank you to uh, our analysts, Nauri and Lafon, and thank you to our casters as well, Bemi, Suds and Bubbles. And thanks to Toadette for doing all the production work behind the scenes. And thank you for the viewers for joining us. We are Broadcast GG, a community uh, of broadcasters doing everything under the sun from casting analysts hosting if you want to get involved uh the links are all down below and be sure to follow to catch up more overwatch action but uh that's it from me spaceman and uh, we'll be back in about 10 minutes time so cheerio